Hello everyone and welcome to the next DLC idea that I have in mind. So this is after the Avery pack, so anything that is in this um, in this video has been affected by some of the things that were in um, that video, such as free flight, because there are, I think I've only got one flying bird in this pack, but either way, it has been affected by the free flight system that I talked about in the Avery pack, uh, avian ammo pack. I still haven't. <laughs> Maybe Avery Pack is just a better name. I don't know. But um, yeah, let's get into this endangered species, uh, well, threatened species animal pack. Because not every animal in this pack is, is in classified as endangered. Um, some are critically endangered, some are extinct in the wild, and some are of the vulnerable status. So um, yeah, so this is sort of the animal pack sequel to conservation. Um, and there are a few interesting ideas here that have been pulled um, by access to some of the features that were in previous DLC ideas I talked about, such as free swimming animals um, on open maps. So, yeah, let's not waste any more time and get into this. So the first an new animal is the Sumatran rhinoceros. I think this would be a great headliner animal for this pack, as... Um, They've recently welcomed a new Sumatran rhinoceros into the world. So, sort of commemorate the successes that are happening with the Sumatran rhino breeding programs in Indonesia. Um, the Sumatran rhino is a good pick for the first choice, in my opinion. Next is Australia's numbat, the living, the, so the closest living relative of the thylacine, found in Western Australian woodlands, and is an insectivore, using its long tongue to um, lap up its insect prey as distinct uh, white stripes on its back and yeah it's just a cute little marsupial of um, the Dazurid group so those are the carnivorous marsupials and um, yeah Numbat would just be cool to see as they have seen some conservation attention in recent years as feral populations of cats and foxes have seriously affected their population um, and yeah, Australia has seen to the Numbats aid, and they are making a recovery. Not a full recovery, but a recovery nonetheless. Um, next is the Red Wolf, um, America, no North America's rarest um, large carnivore, I'm pretty sure, as there are, I think, less than 12 um, adults remaining in the wild. I think that's it, but um, they are found in multiple uh, captive um, facilities. So the red wolf hasn't lost all hope and given its plight, it is a perfect animal for this pack. And that's, we could see how Frontier could handle a wolf again. Um, this isn't of the Carnus loot. Well, actually, it and the dingo are somewhat often disputed as being part of Carnus lupus, which is um, wolf, aka gray wolf. And um, like I... I I like to assume that they're both different. So, like, Dingo is Carnus Dingo, and the Red Wolf is Carnus Rufus. But um, either way, it would be great to see in the game. Um, the flying owl for this pack is the Spix's Macaw. So this is famous because of the movie Rio and the fact that they are possibly the most... Uh, the yes, they are the most endangered macaw in the world. Um, they were extinct in the wild, but through captive breeding, they have seen a slight recovery, and um, hopefully in the years to come, the Spix's McCall will be flying free and then the wild again. The next owl is the Saiga antelope. It was in captivity, so like the Sumatran rhinoceros, like rhinoceros, it can count in this regard and be successfully kept in your zoos around um, in whatever map you choose to build with the pieces that you have access to. But Saiga antelope are possibly the most unique looking antelope with those big noses that help filter the dust with the those kicked up by the vast herds that used to roam the Mongolian steppe. Well, Eurasian steppers, not just the Mo Mongolian. You get what I mean. But um, they, they are very interesting as they even have a winter coat, which would be a nice um, update feature for this. So, like, animals being able to swap between winter coats and summer coats, and um, that giving a bit more variation to the animals that you have in your zoos throughout the year. 
So, yeah, that could work for Arctic foxes. It could work for dolls, um, for bison, for uh, Siberian tigers even, and animal leopards. Like, they're fluffier, and then they get a slight bit thinner um, on the hair side. But males will inflate their noses um, in displays. And, yeah, they're, they're a very odd antelope, but a very important antelope to conserve for the future. Um, our reptile for the pack is the Cuban crocodile. So they are pro one of my favourites, as they have been known to chase after their keepers, as they're, they're probably the best adapted to a land-based lifestyle than any other crocodilian. And yeah, they full-on run after after people if they're a bit aggressive, and they are, are one of the most aggressive crocodilians in the world. But um, nonetheless, they are also critically endangered only living in a few areas on the island of Cuba and are at threat of being somewhat bred out as they have been known to have been crossbreeding with American crocodiles. So Cuban crocodiles do seriously need our help and this pack would spread awareness for this largely unheard of crocodilian. Um, another North American mammal that is heavily threatened um, is the black-footed ferret. This would be our our first ferret and sort of um, non-otter or badger or skunk mustelid. So um, blackwood ferrets are found on, in the prairies and plains of North America where they hunt prairie dogs um, as they are specialized for following them down into the prairie dog tunnels and catching their prey underground and then dragging them out to eat them. They have been threatened with habitat loss and and hunting and predation, all that sort of nasty stuff that happens to drive animals to extinction. But black-footed ferrets have made a slight recovery, but they're not out of the woods yet. Um, so black-footed ferret is on this list as, well, they need our help more than most other mammals in North America. Um, our exhibit animal is the Panamanian golden frog. So this species is, is extinct in the wild with reintroduction efforts being um, being made, but they will not be safe until that that fungus that has wiped them out in the wild is dealt with and has a, has a cure developed so that these frogs can continue to live in the wild without the threat of disease. So yeah, they're found in a variety of different institutions in America particularly, um, and yeah, their, their bright yellow coloration and black spots would make them a very eye-catching little addition from Panama. On to a few alternatives. We have the Woyli. Is it Woyli? Woyli. I honestly, I honestly have no idea how, how you're actually supposed to name it. Like, I've called it Woyli for several years, and honestly, that has stuck with me for a while, but let's just use their more common name, the Brushtail Batong. Actually, is it more common? Because even Google refers to it as the Woylie. Either way, the Woylie or Brushtail Batong is an endangered macropod in similar size to a quokka, um, which probably have points against adding it, but they are threatened with extinction and ha are one of the few Australian marsupials to have made it overseas to um, American zoos. So I know that um, a few zoos over in America have these guys. And they're lucky to have them because I have never seen one. And I live in Australia. <laughs> but, um, yeah, it'd be just another interesting species to see added to plant zoo. Um, another endangered macropod is the highly requested Goodfellows tree kangaroo. So this is one of the uh, um, few packs that really remain that a tree kangaroo could be added in. And it would be nice to see as tree kangaroos are one of my favourite animals to come across in a zoo, and one of the only animals that I really do want in Planet Zoo before the game ends. So hopefully, fingers crossed, next year we could see it, potentially. Or even this year, if, that, if Frontier goes around of adding them in the Highlands pack. Um, another bird that could be considered is the Malio, um, a species from Southeast Asia that happens to be a terrible parent. Um, they are a megapode bird, so sort of like a sort of hen kind of animal. Um, they're a little bit strange looking, 
but are, are also critically endangered. So um, yeah, they need they need some serious help if they're going to survive, considering their bad parenting skills. So humans have to step in and take the place of a good parent and help the Malia recover. An alternative crocodilian is the Orinoco crocodile from South America, um, critically endangered, and um, yeah, it, it, it's another crocodile and is on the meta wish list, unlike several other crocodilians, um, as I happen to find. Chinese alligator is also another option, but I like I like the Orinoco crocodile particularly as um, I've seen them on a show called Deadly Sixty. Don't know if you heard of it, but um, yeah, they're just a cool species and would spice up the crocodilian roster of South America to not just being caiman. Um, some some other alternative species are the fishing cat, um, a species of cat known for catching fish in Southeast Asia. They are endangered as poaching and habitat loss has degraded their numbers, with wetlands being turned into urban areas and farmland. Fishing cats have lost a, a lot of their habitat. But um, I can't really think of many other packs I could see the fishing cat being added in other than this one. Unless Frontier wanted to do a tropical rainforest animal pack. I mean, I wouldn't be, I wouldn't be against it, but um, it, it'd feel a bit repetitive at this point, considering we've had a South America pack, we've had a tropical pack, we've had a Southeast Asia animal pack, a wetlands animal pack. This fishing cat has had many chances to come into the game, but I guess it's just not high enough. Um, to be added, but I would like to see it personally. Another favourite cat of mine is the Sumatran tiger, a species found in several zoos worldwide. Well, I say species, subspecies of tiger, um, particularly the Sunda tigers, which were found on the islands of Indonesia. Sumatran tiger being the last with the Borneo, Java, um, and I think there was one more. At least the Borneo and Java tigers um are both extinct so Sumatran tiger is the last and one of the most important in conservation today so it, it it would be an easy animal to make and i could see see frontier doing it and i'd love to see frontier give another crack at a tiger because a majestic creature should deserve all the respect another australian species that could be added is the southern corroboree frog um, so this species is also helped out by Taronga Zoo often due to a fungus that has taken to their population um, horrifically in the wild. Um, I've been to the national park in which they're found, Kujusko National Park, um, the national park where you can find Australia's highest mountain, Mount Kujusko, um, or Kosciuszko as many um, Australians call it, but it is in fact a Polish name, I believe. So Southern Corroboree Frogs are also another eye-catching amphibian with those bright bright yellow colours and the black stripes to break it up. Um, it would be a personal um, it would be a personal treat for me as I've seen Southern Corroboree Frogs, not in the wild, but at Taronga Zoo itself. And they're just a tiny little frog and that would be cool to see in the game. On to a bit of the career scenario. So when it comes to these career scenarios, there would be a whole bunch of them, <laughs> which allows you to go out into the wild, like what I was saying with um, the Antarctica pack, to see different wild animals in their natural habitats and help conserve them. So the different um, animals I've got in mind are the Ethiopian wolf of the Ethiopian highlands, the mountain gorilla, one of the most famous endangered species, the Javan rhino, the Vakita porpoise, which has um, had a win recently, I believe. I think just even today, um, and they they've increased, they've signed a treaty, I believe, to increase its protected area to help conserve it, and the total arborfish, which has caused a lot of its bycatch issues. It would just be cool to see some of these species in the game, and a few others I have in mind are the Indri lemur. Um, Madagascar's largest lemur, um, that would be cool to see in the game. The Mountain Nyala, sort of a, um, a bonus for the Ethiopian wolf mission. Leatherback turtle would be another cool species, with the green turtle um, I included in the coastal animal pack. The leatherback turtle would be easy to make after that. 
another pretty easy animal to make would be the um, African forest elephant. So this would sort of fall into the mountain gorilla mission, um, you could say. Um, on And the Walia ibex is another species not found in captivity, but we can reuse the animations of the alpine ibex and would be another bonus for that um, Ethiopian wolf mission. And just another um, little mission could be a trip to the Galapagos Islands. We've already got a Galapagos giant tortoise, and it's in the base game, so it could easily um, weave its way into the mission. And you could help protect species like the marine iguana, the endangered Galapagos sea lion, and Galapagos penguin. So that's just a few ideas I've had in mind um, for some of the wild animals. On to a few update features that I'd like to see. Um, with this, a crocodile feeding show, particularly with the Cuban crocodile, would be very entertaining. Um, just to show these magnificent reptiles in all their glory. And it could work with the saltwater crocodile, the American alligator, spectacled caiman, Cuban crocodile, or, um, or Orinoco crocodile. Um, it won't work with the gharial. Gharials eat fish, although that could sort of be worked in. Like, the keeper just throws a different bit of bait at it, um, like different feed. Um, another feature is adding hanging hair to the orangutan. Given this is a threatened species um, DLC, I thought the orangutan, given that it is also one of the most famous endangered species in the world, could get a bit of a hairdo change from just the coarse hair that we've got right now to a much more um, flowing hanging hair, which would be really cool to see as it brachiates. Speaking of hair, um, it would be nice to see a sort of lift in the hair quality on the black wildebeest to bring it more in line with the blue wildebeest um, just to give them a bit more similarity in quality and speaking of blue wildebeest increasing their social limits be, uh, be wildebeest no that's a dragon um sorry i'm a how to train dragon nerd as well but um will the blue wildebeest migrates in its tens of thousands up to its millions i'm pretty sure on the Serengeti Plains. And right now we can't really get to that sort of scale without pushing the social limit. Wildebeest are surprisingly social, so it would be a cool sight to see in Plant Zoo, just all these wildebeest in one enclosure. Yeah, it'd be nice to see. Um, a few other update features are particularly new rides or attractions. So one, uh, so a few of these could be a tour bus, a tour bus that follows a route around your zoo um, requiring a 10 meter wide path um, so it can run safely without um, coming into contact with crowds just bring you bring the guests past all the different exhibits as for those people that don't really want to walk all the way um, another alternative gondola ride would be a cool cool thing to see so like San Diego's um, sky sky Fari, I think it's called I think that's what it's called <laughs> And it's more of a bucket than this weird bubble um, that we've got right now. Um, a proper safari truck would be a cool thing to see, carrying more visitors than the current 4x4 um, safari vehicle, um, bring, bringing a bit more scale to the animals and bringing a bit closer. Um, also, another version of guest transport could be a tram ride like Singapore zoos have. Um, it could also be an alternative tour vehicle, taking you past various habitats as well, um, and possibly even into habitats. It could work both ways. Maybe just not open-sided like, like the one you can see in the picture. That one could be restricted to the past, but if that could be modified to having closed walls, then it could be sent into the habitats. That would be cool to see. A few new... A few other new features would be uh, very clear glass because the glass we have right now is somewhat cloudy um, and you can't really, the animals are somewhat indistinct. It would be cool if we could just get a perfect uh, clear as crystal glass barrier and pieces too. That, that would just be the dream. A few other guest um, items could be a climbing system, so a climbing attraction getting visitors up to the monkeys level and and that could be worked into um a player's creativity quite well like you're building near some gibbons 
and you can have your guests climbing up onto onto these climbing ropes and seeing the gibbons at their level brachiating through the trees. Um, another feature could be a zip line or flying fox um, attraction, allowing guests to soar over um, the animals in particularly large zoos like a safari park. And um, speaking of safari parks, giraffe feeding. Gotta happen. <laughs> Giraffe feeding would be fantastic. But um, this is one of the most ambitious DLCs I've ever thought of um, because it's got so many wild animals in it. But then again, Antarctica was pretty ambitious too because it also had a lot of wild animals. But I think this one would be very good in projecting that conservation message and making more players and general audiences more aware of the endangered animals of this planet and just bring some unheard of species into the limelight. Like, I don't know how many people know that there's a Javan rhino or that there's even a Sumatran rhino. Like, who's to say? Most people probably haven't even heard of a numbat or a black-footed ferret. Um, for those kids that watch Rio, did they even pay attention to the name of the macaw? This, could, this DLC could help that. And um, I would love to see this come to fruition one day in Plant Zoo. Like the conservation pack was great for introducing several um, high profile endangered species that the community was really wanting. But I think the selection I've got right here would help boost that number and would be very good for the game. And then we could have all the rhinos in the game um, in, in some capacity. I think that would be very cool. But let me know what you think of this DLC in the comments down below. And with that, I'll see you in the next video. Probably got to think of what next DLC to do or just leave it here. I thought I'd just get one last one done, but I'll see what I can do about an aquarium DLC. We'll see about that. Anyway, like if you enjoyed the video and subscribe for more. I'll see you later. Bye-bye.